communities, um, even using object-oriented programming techniques is considered a radical idea, <laughs> right? Um, and at Apple, we've benefited significantly from object-oriented programming. Um, and um, we believe those benefits actually are as important for compilers as they are for GUI programming kits or other kits, um, animation, whatever. And so we feel strongly that an object-oriented architecture is critical. It just so happens we, we're using C++ because it's a wonderful language for writing a compiler, but we're not even religious about C++. We're more religious about the architecture and what we're trying to do. Um, the other thing about Progressive is the LVM community is an extremely kind and gentle and mentoring community. Um, I think this comes from the top with Chris. Um, I used to work in the GCC community, and it was different. Um, <laughs> And when I was 26, year, 26 years old, I could deal with the people there. I'm older now and don't want to deal with that. <laughs> um, so um, in any event. Uh, and certainly, the modular LVM-inspired architecture is very important to us. So again, we're going to talk about static analysis today. Refactoring is, is another feature where we work on, cross all this stuff. Incremental compilation is probably the most challenging. But you can interpret incremental compilation in, in many different ways, right? Um, certainly, um, when you're a batch compiler and you're forced to read the files off the disk, it's, it's definitely not incremental. But as soon as you start caching things in an IDE or any other program, it starts becoming incremental, right? So um, there's many interesting things we could do there. I just have one slide here as, as um, a check. I'm not going to talk much about performance. Last year, I said we were. Um, two and a half uh, times faster than GCC um, for batch compilation. Um, at the time, it was just running it over our big header file. Here, we're compiling Postgres SQL, which is a fairly uh, large code base. And GCC 4.2 um, compiles it in 49 seconds. We compile it in 21 seconds. And it's 2.3 times faster. So it's a little bit slower than what I said last year. But since we don't have A-B compares, it's, it's really hard to do precise analysis there. The point is, we're about as fast as we said we were last year. Um, and that's good, um, because the compiler is actually correct, more correct, than it was last year. Um, I have more detail slides on this type, but I didn't bring them today. But um, the breakdown is roughly, and this may surprise some of you, 65% uh, of the time we spend in pre-processing and lexical analysis, 25% of the time we spend doing semantic analysis and AST um, building, and only 10% parsing. Okay. So um, while the parsing framework I'm going to talk about um, uh, in a little while is layered and reusable and, and really nice, it's not our performance problem. Okay. Our big performance issue is pre-processing. Um, and interestingly, when you're in an IDE, there's tons of stuff you can cache. So the good news is that 65% number can be improved on significantly. So let's look at the Clang architecture and libraries as a review. So basic. Basic is a library that deals with source we have a source manager object, file manager, it deals with diagnostics. Basically, a lot of uh, nice objects for dealing with language independent um, concepts. Lex is the first library that deals um, with language specific things, Lexing tokens in C um, and Objective C. Now, um, Lex um, is conceptually simple, right? It takes characters, turns them into tokens. But what's not simple about the Lex library is it contains the preprocessor. The preprocessor um, and Lex do this very tight dance that, um, uh, for efficiency. So, but um, we have one library that has the lexical analyzer and preprocessor. The parser there is a recursive descent hand-built parser um, that Chris and I wrote. And um, it, is, uh, it's, it works well. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it, I'll talk more about that later. Um, uh, some people think doing uh, or using compiler compilers is the way you need to go, but we think this uh, hand-built uh, parser is fairly easy to maintain and, and, and nicely, nicely done. Um, the uh, abstract syntax tree are a bunch of C++ objects that model the source code. Um, 
even though it's, it's called an abstract syntax tree, it's fairly concrete. The objects are, are not very abstract at all. Um, the one um, thing that they don't contain, the traditional compilers contain, are details on the code generation. So these ASTs purely reflect the source code. And they're designed to be small, and they're designed to be written to disk and read from disk. Right for eventually doing precompile headers and other fancy um, things. SEMA is um, an actions module. I'll tell you what that is in a minute. And what that does is do semantic analysis on C and Objective C, and it builds the trees. So that's um, the core library. On the right side, we have um, analysis, which Ted's going to talk about, the static analysis um, application of Clang, which is still written as a library. So um, our, our approach is not only to build um, our infrastructure or our core using um, libraries, but to also build Clang applications using libraries so folks can layer their um, applications on top of that. Um, the rewriter is an interesting um, library for uh, doing refactoring. It will basically take code fragments and replace code fragments and insert code fragments. Um, it's a very interesting um, library. And LLVM gen. LLVM gen takes ASTs and produces LLVM bytecodes. At last year's uh, meeting, that was a fix me. And now it's um, pretty far along. So, and, and down below, um, just to emphasize, these libraries can be used uh, by a command line compiler or by an IDE. Today, I'm only going to talk about what's on the left side, and um, in particular, just uh, a few of those libraries. So let's start. We have Clang components at the lowest level. We have a lexer, a preprocessor, and a parser. And very simple stuff. You call in. The parser asks the preprocessor for a token, and the, uh, and the preprocessor, in turn, will ask the lexer for a token. Very straightforward. We have these Clang parser actions, which are an abstract interface that corresponds to roughly the language elements in the uh, C and Objective-C grammar. And that's, that's abstract. So there's a whole slew of act on delegate methods. Uh, the most um, complex um, set of uh, delegate methods are for declarations, because C declarations are complex to, to parse and analyze. and um, they include types, and C types are complex to parse and analyze. So that makes these actions, uh, they're as straightforward as they can be, we believe, but ultimately you really have to understand the C language to